Good morning, my beloveds, and thank you so much for being here in worship today. On this World Communion Sunday, I want to remind you that we are that there is one God and we are one people. I'd like to begin with a passage from the Epistle to the Galatians in chapter 3, beginning with the 23rd verse. So, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When I think of World Communion Sunday, I get excited about the fact that tens of thousands of Christian brothers and sisters, siblings around the world are coming to the Lord's table to remember our Lord and to proclaim final victory to the world. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're hailing from, because from God's perspective, there are no political, ethnic, cultural, or national boundaries. From God's perspective, we are one people, the people of God. One of the things that excites me about church history is that the first century church believed that Christ church stands for a radical inclusion of all of God's children. They believe that all these barriers we as humans work so hard to build, God in Christ broke them apart. In an anonymous letter that survived from the early second century addressed to Diognetus, a Roman official, the author actually speaks about Christianity as a new race. To His Excellency, Diognetus, I understand, sir, that you are really interested in learning about the religion of the Christians and that you are making an accurate and careful investigation of the subject. You would also like to know that the source of the loving affection that they have for each other. You wonder, too, why this new race or way of life has appeared on earth now and not earlier. These three questions are dealt with in the text more or less in order, but with some overlapping. The reference to the new or the third race calls attention to an issue of great importance for the life of the early church, which concerned such varied questions as the church's understanding of its vocation in history and the Roman world's attitude toward the church. And that should be the message of the church worldwide. You are welcome here, every single one of you, for God's grace is enough for all. God's love is poured out to all, and whosoever believes shall be saved. John 3.16 Whosoever what a lovely word. With the arrival of the Church of Jesus Christ, a new age has dawned. Nobody ever needs to feel excluded again, for as St. Paul says it, all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. My beloveds, my siblings, Paul clearly declares to us that there are no second-class Christians. If you are a baptized believer, you're all the way in the inner sanctum. You are in the holy of holies. The veil has been torn. Everyone is welcome, and everyone is equal in God's eyes. We are all children of God. We are to be one 
in Jesus Christ. We are to be the new race made up of a multitude of diverse people. We are one and in our oneness lies our strength. In our oneness will, will the world see the difference in us through our love with the world, see the love and grace of Jesus Christ. And so my beloveds, my siblings in Christ, I wish you on this day a happy World Communion Sunday. May you come to the table, may you be filled with the blessing of Christ Jesus as you continue in your relationship as a disciple of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Peace be with you. God bless.